doesn't seem like very much. It doesn't seem like very much. And so why should we complain? Why is it such a big issue? Why is it such a damn big issue? If it's not really going to affect me or you, because if you look at it, it is a very big darn issue. Very big. Really big. He cooked this one up in Hawaii. He and the group were sitting there in that rental house in Kailua, cooking it up to come back to suck the next quart of blood out of the Constitution, like the vampires that they are. And the biggest thing I can tell you is that the biggest and most dangerous part of this is the health issue, the mental health issue, because it opens the door to a Soviet Union-style fascistic government overreach in ways you could never imagine. But I see things way before everybody else does. That's what I'm hired to do. I'm not boasting. I'm not telling you I'm smarter than you. But you pay me to put things together that you may or may not have done so before I did. And then you say, yeah, like a light bulb. Okay, right. He's right about that. It doesn't mean I'm smarter than you, although I probably uh, have the ability to see things pretty clearly. It means I have ability to express it in a way you wish you could express it. As the French writer Malamé, who I learned in college, wrote, uh, uh, Donnez plus clair la mot, le mot, le mot de la tribu. I hardly remember my French. I used to be very fluent. And uh, I studied it for seven years. But it was so beautifully written. The French were brilliant in their writings. To uh, donner plus clair the, le mot de la tribu. To make more clear the words of the tribe is how he described what a poet was. Malamé said the work of the poet is to make more clear the words of the tribe. And that's what we in talk radio are supposed to do. In essence, we're poets. We're the poets of the airwaves. Did you know that? I don't think you know that, but anyway, that's a side note. We're actually poets, most of us, but we should be anyway. And those of us who are poetic are loved for it and beloved for it. So the thing is, is that I'm trying to make more clear the words of my tribe. And my tribe says, no, no go on this uh, gun control stuff. Because it doesn't do anything to stop the violence. Because the bad guys and the crazy guys are going to get the guns anyway. All it's going to do is give government more power over the legal and law-abiding gun owner. The same way that Loretta Lynch tried to steal our right to free speech with her edges towards violence statement, that's what he did today. This is all they can think about. Now, I'm sure many of you don't see it as clearly as I do, and you're just diehard leftists who are glad that he did something on guns, and you can rest easier tonight. All you Woody Allens in Manhattan are probably breathing easier tonight. Uh, thinking that the white man Nazi gun owner, who you fear every night as you uh, lock your apartment door, the Nazi that doesn't even exist in America, except in your own mind, is going to no longer be able to come and break your door down and kill you. And I, sus I suspect we have some of them hanging on the lines right now on the Savage Nation. If you can't join them, the, f the phone number is 855-400-7282. Let's take a couple of those... Uh, Callers now, WABC Bernie. I guess you're one of those who like the law. Hi there, Mr. Savage. Uh, I agree with like 90% of what you say, and also your evaluation of uh, the president's psyche. But uh, uh, and I'm an NRA member and a Republican, and I own guns. But uh, uh, I do believe part of the problem is people with mental illness, and as imperfect it is, is. And uh, although the president's doing an end around, which I don't agree with, I still think you got to address the problem. I don't know what else you can do. Well, first of all, I don't know that you're a gun owner and a Republican and this and that or an NRA member. That's irrelevant whether you are or you aren't. All that matters is that he's violating the law. We're a nation of laws. He's violating the law. He can't make law. He's, he's making up law, so it's a null and void. That's the whole point of the show. The man is violating the law with his executive order. And that's the end of the story. If this is so important and this is such a smart solution, then let Congress pass the law. Right, but is the point of the show the law or is it the solution to the problem of uh, people with mental illness having a gun? Well, okay, please define mental illness for us. Uh, well, I, I, I have mental illness. Uh, a person who uh, maybe is bipolar and has a gun has, uh, gets off his well, well, hold it, hold it. So anyone who is bipolar is, by your definition, mentally ill and should be denied the access to a gun. If he goes off his meds, maybe. Uh, I'm not. I'm, so, so that, wait, so wait a minute. Okay, that's interesting. So now you've already become a psychiatrist, so a bipolar individual is automatically violent? Mr. Savage, what do you do with the people who do have mental illness 
Well, now you're changing the subject. You define mental illness as a bipolar person. I would say that 90% of Congress would meet that definition. Uh, and, and how many of our police who have guns are diagnosed as bipolar and are, and are on medication? Should they also be uh, disarmed? All I know is that many of the, uh, the shootings that happened, uh, a lot of them have been by people with mental illness. Who was more mentally ill, him or his mother? You remember that kid, Adam, who shot those kids up in, in, in Newton, Massachusetts? Remember that one? Yep. It was Adam Lanza. Now, who bought him the guns? The mother did. But it was Adam who was the, who was the sicko, not the mother. The mother bought him the guns, though, and she wouldn't have been found under the mental illness uh, laws that you're mentioning because she wasn't declared mentally uh, unstable. It was the son, Adam, who couldn't have a gun, but she bought one for him. So how does that work out? I, I don't know, but you have to address the problem in some way. Shape. Well, I am addressing the problem. The problem is not solved by creating more problems. You're now going to drag in your net every every uh, every, every individual suffering PTSD who's in a psychiatrist under a therapist care will now now go into an FBI database and be blocked from buying a gun. That could include police. It could be include former American uh, um, uh, war heroes. I, I don't think you'd want that, do you? No, absolutely not. All right. Well, thanks for the call. We'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. So there is a genocide going on against Christians, against Yazidis, against the Syrians, a genocide of World War II proportions. We have industrial scale rape going on against innocent girls in the Middle East. And this character in the White House has the nerve to turn America into the battleground that he chooses to play in. If this is not an example of an abuse of power, I'd like to know what is. And also, a man who has lost his ability to discern right from wrong, if he ever had it to begin with, which I doubt very much. Let's take some calls. Michael on WMAL in the great city of Washington, D.C., Go ahead, please. Yes, Michael. I'm a psychologist by education and training, and I can tell you I know what you're pointing to, and you're spot on. This is really a subterfuge. It's a sleight of hand. It has nothing to do with guns. What it has to do with is transforming the state, which is what his said purpose was when he took over. He wants to make a therapeutic state so that he can control dissidents. He, he, because that's what psychiatry is, is most times used for, because um, it, it works like this. Psychi psychiatric power and practically all societies expands on the grounds of public safety. You see public safety in guns, which is in the view of the leaders of the USSR, the best way to maintain an orderly society by being able to say they're psychiatrically impaired, therefore they need to be controlled, and you send them to the psychologist. Now, that means that what you're... Hold, hold on, let me interject. People. Now, this is a very important point and one that I'm very familiar with. The great Soviet writer, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, wrote about this. He was declared mentally unstable because he criticized the state, and he was sent to a labor camp as a result of that. In the uh, Stalin era and after, by the way, in the Soviet Union, people who were dissidents, anyone who disagreed with the Obamas of Russia, were called, they were sent to a state uh, an Obamacare facility. In the Obamacare facility of the Soviet Union, there were state-owned doctors. The state-owned doctors rubber-stamped the fact that they were mentally unstable uh, because they criticized the perfect state of the Soviet Union. It was considered to be perfect uh, by the leaders. And anyone who said otherwise was declared nuts, and they were sent to mental hospitals called the Gulag Archipelago. This is also a possibility in time if this is not curtailed in the beginning. People don't understand what could happen when you give a state this much power, particularly when you put it in the hands of uh, the medical profession with the state. When you have the government medical complex in such a cozy relationship, the end is always bad. So it's not so much that people won't go to their psychologist because they're afraid that the guns will be taken away from them if they say they have it. It's the other side of the coin. It's that they will be forced to go to psychologists because they're dissenters. 
That's what this is all about, is to get absolute control, tyranny over the American people. And this is just some, this is a camel's nose under the tent. All right. That's how I see it. Many of us see it that way, sending you a free copy of the book that warned America, Government Zero. Back in a minute, right here for your calls on The Savage Nation. clear in my mind that this administration has edged towards violence uh, in their in their skirting the laws and ma- making up law. And he's edging towards violence every day, as in my previous book, Stop the Coming Civil War. This man is provoking civil war in this country. You know, I haven't raised the one main question of the day. Someone asked me this early in the morning. A very intelligent man said to me, why is he doing this now? He doesn't have to do this now. He doesn't have to do this now. The country's in turmoil. The country is boiling over with rage. The country is boiling over with rage. There are so many bad things going on. Flooding America with illegal aliens. Bringing in Syrians against the will of the American people. Let's go down the list. The cost of living, the stock market, you name it. Why does he have to do this now, the man said to me. Why is he doing it now? He doesn't have to do it now. We're all missing the forest for the trees. This man is provoking insurrection in America. I I hinted at this and stopped the coming civil war. This man wants insurrection. He wants violence to break out. He's dying for the white man to finally explode, to be very, very blunt. Who was the dominant gun owner in America? Who was the number one gun owner? Have you broken that down demographically? And I say the legal gun owner. No one's asked that question, have they? No one's made this a racial issue, have they? I'll make it a racial issue. Who is the number one gun owner, legal gun owner in America? I have to say the word legal over and over again. White males. So who is this law aimed at? White males. Why is it aimed at white males? I'll let you figure that out. So if you analyze everything this man does to antagonize the white, heterosexual, Christian middle class, you'll see what he's doing. You'll see exactly what he's doing. And then you have to ask yourself, why? What does he gain by doing this? Then you'll have to ask yourself, what does he gain by doing this? Then you have to ask yourself, what is the end game in doing this? What do they want? What does Al Sharpton want? What does Al Sharpton, Loretta Lynch, and this cabal of uh, individuals, what do they really want to happen here? You have to ask yourself, is it really about stopping violence and protecting children? We're, we're all for that. Nobody wants to see maniacs go into schools and shoot them dead. Nobody. There are many things that can be done to stop that. One of them would be putting an armed guard in every school. That would be a very smart thing to do. Another thing would be arming teachers if they want to be armed. If they're not afraid to carry a weapon, let them have one. If they're trained and they're certified, they can carry a gun, let them carry a gun into a school. Many things that can be done that are done in a sane society of gun owners, by the way, to protect themselves and protect their children. Many, many things can be done other than restricting access to weapons to law-abiding citizens. And the most worrisome part of this, as I've said today, is the is the garner, uh, uh, the gaining of more power through the psychiatric uh, profession, or shall I say the therapeutic profession. It's going to really, you, you therapists, you may be liberal in your or- orientation, and many of you listen to me because uh, you like my ability to present the other side, and you, you analyze whether you agree with me or not, and stuff. I understand because I can think and I express ideas, which is very unusual in the media to begin with. That's why we call the show the talk show, the talk radio for the thinking person. You notice that's the new motto for 2016? Talk radio for the thinking person. So many of you don't agree with me, but you think, which is an unusual thing to begin with in America today. And you like to think by bouncing your ideas off an opponent who can think and who has a different point of view. So that's who I am. I'm the different point of view. I'm the uh, the, the right wing newspaper for you left wingers. Let's put it to you, to you that way. The intelligent conservative newspaper. However you want to put it, doesn't matter. So I ask you to think about this. How do you think this is going to impact the healing professions? You have to ask yourself that, and there's a simple answer. It will destroy the relationship between the uh, therapeutic professions and individuals who are gun owners or want to be gun, remain gun owners who will never go back to a therapist. They will never express their anxiety. They will never express their depression. They will never express their urges. Never. 
because they're afraid they'll wind up on the FBI watch list that Obama is creating, and they will uh, have their guns seized by this maniac government. That's what's going to happen. Now, aside from the fact that what he's proposing is stupid, plain old stupid, as Donald